Hey, how's it going dudes? Brad the Guitologist here. We're going to do a little bit of a different video today. It's probably going to be a Channel 2 video. It's a beautiful day out here in Louisville, Kentucky. You'd never know the world was ending. Birds are singing. Dew's glistening on a newly formed leaf. Stop lights. The following video is sponsored by Court Street Band. Check them out on Facebook, Instagram, and Spotify. Links in the description. So this was one of my roadside finds. This is a Newton. Uh, I'm not sure what the model number on this is, but it's, you know, it's, I think their company is, you know, touting themselves as green uh, because all their products are electric. So this is a fully electric mower. Um, you see there that little key is a safety key. Uh, what that does basically is if you hit something, the, f the force of the current will actually throw that key up and out of that um, to keep you, know, you from, I don't know, running over yourself or something. Um, and again, I'm not sure what model number this thing is, but uh, when I got it, the battery was completely dead. And um, I've had to make my own batteries for it the entire time I've had it. Like I said, I just picked it up on the side of the road. Oh, there's the model number, I think. Yeah, right there. CE 6.2. I think that's the model number for this mower. Um, and it would have had a top on it, like a like a lid that would flip up that made it kind of look all sleek and everything. But I took that off because it was pretty useless. Um, it has a, right under this battery, it has a compartment for a proprietary battery that sets right down on some, uh, some terminals. Uh, but if you buy the proprietary battery for one of these, you could, I think they're like 150, but I don't even know what they are now, but. maybe even 200 bucks. Uh, but when I looked, it was more than I wanted to spend for a battery. So what I've been doing in the past is using these batteries. These are like, um, I forget the amp hours on these, but you can find them, little sealed lead acid batteries. And I've been using these little uh, battery arrays. This thing is 36 volts. So what you can do is you can actually put three 12 volts in series and run it like that. And when you charge it, if you have a 12 volt charger like this one, uh, you change over uh, the leads so that you have the leads or the three battery cells in parallel so that you can charge off a 12 volt. Um, so what I'm doing now is actually changing uh, over from using these type of batteries to these. These are like bigger amp hour batteries. But as you can see, it's not gonna fit down inside of that cavity down there so I'm gonna have to do I'm gonna have to take this top off and chop that off somehow probably with a hacksaw uh, to fit that down on there but uh, this is something I put together just last night a viewer to the channel sent me these little terminals I've mounted to the top here you can see there's a little lip on this middle battery I don't know if you can see it or not but there's a little lip it's like a handle so that's what I've got those screwed into you can see on this one it's just kind of hollow so the screws are going down inside of that uh, so right now it's set up to charge you can see the three positive leads are all going to a single terminal and the three negative leads are all going to a single terminal and I have it hooked up to my battery charger and as you can see uh, it's not drawing any current at the moment it's all the way down on zero so this thing is fully charged and ready to rock for the first time, but before I can do anything, I need to take the top off of this and cut into the uh, base, but you'll see what I mean in just a second. Let's get into that. Okay, you can kind of see what I mean here about the uh, cavity on this thing. And here are the terminals down here. There's the positive one, there's the negative one. Uh, I'm gonna lift the top off of this entire mower and, and cut this so that we can fit that battery down in there. And I need to uh, permanently solder some leads to those, some real nice hefty leads so that can come up and plug into the battery. And we need to be able to change the battery too uh, whenever we, you know, whenever we need to. So we'll see what we can do. We might have to chop this thing all up, but it should be interesting. There's a safety key is what it looks like. It's just basically two leads and I think it, I think that's a little breaker that's in there that you can reset 
And if you hit something hard, or if it you know draws a lot of current at once, this 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 key will actually just pop up out of here, and you have to reset it in. So it's I guess it's kind of cool for that. This whole top should just pop off after I get all four screws out. Oh, there's more screws. Two more screws. Also, this thing comes off. Now I could technically just leave that big battery sitting up here on top and it might be all right for the most part, but it just seemed a bit unstable. So I want to try to get it sit down where the center of gravity is a little lower too, so it doesn't flop around. But you can kind of see there's not, there's not really a whole lot to one of these besides the battery and an electric motor. And you have a relay system here that, you know, will shut things on and off. You've got the safety, uh, key that goes over there between those two terminals um, and your various wires coming in here to these terminals and it's pretty simple um, it does have a fuse as well so if you have one of these and it just quits on you mysteriously it could be that something to do with the fuse um, I suppose if you had a uh, an overvolted uh, battery somehow or you know you had a spike a surge of surge of current it would it might take that out so you'd have to check that but yeah there's again there's not a whole lot to one of these we're well, gonna go ahead and sweep it out there's a lot of debris in here so i'll go ahead and clean it out while i have this off but what i'm gonna have to do over here i think is you see where uh this kind of well is down here i'm gonna ch i'm gonna chop most of that out leaving the terminal bits and uh see if i can't get that battery sat down in there see how far off I am with this thing I don't think it's uh yeah this, this is a heavy battery yeah it's really taxing the uh suspension system on this it's, it's, it's these springs that's the suspension right there it's, it's kind of taxing that a bit to, to put that heavy of a battery on here but the only reason it's even moving at all is because uh, this doesn't have a stopping point without the top on it this has nothing to stop it into position uh, to set the grass height so that's why it's moving up and it won't do that normally uh, but i definitely don't need this anymore this is just a this is just a stopper for the uh, or a lockdown for the proprietary battery so it's unnecessary we don't need it i think i want to flip this thing over and just dump it All right, so that'll get rid of some weight. And like I said, I want to I want to just cut most of this stuff off. So I'm, I'm going to use some probably some real hacky kind of methods here. And hopefully, I can get to it. I don't see how I'm going to be able to do it really because there's not a there's not a whole lot of room. I was hoping. I guess the hacksaw might fit. I'm going to have to do something about getting this sp spring needs to be out of the way. Maybe not. Maybe I can do it without it. Moving it. No, I can't. I'm not gonna be able to get with the hacksaw either. Or am I? Yeah, this might be a job for a uh, this might be a job for a Dremel tool. I might just come in here with the Dremel uh, wheel and w saw that out. There went wheel number one. I wonder how many this is going to take to go through this. Two. Is 
I need a better option really, but this is the only one I have available to me at the moment. It'd be nice if I had a big cutoff wheel for my drill. But I am not going to the hardware store right now with everything going on. Number three. Okay, so there is, there's a lot of it right there. Half of it's done. We'll go ahead and uh, get the rest of this out and then see where that takes us. Okay, so there is all of that material removed. And you can see it's all cut out there and there's what's left of it. So uh, what I need to do now is get the top and we'll cut into the top. I think what I want to do on the top is is get my saw and cut this side over here from the edge uh, outward. I believe that's what I want to do. We'll see. I've lost track. I don't know what number that is. how close I was. <laughs> All right, good enough. Good enough. Okay. Um, I guess let's get the top back on. Or well, I want to see if it fits. Hang on. Let's get it back on and I think we can make that work. I might have to I might have to cut a little slit up on this side to kind of ease it ease it in. Let's just do a test fit here real quick because I think I'm what I'm gonna have to do is um I'm gonna have to get in here anyway and uh change those cables make them longer so that they'll extend all the way to the battery i don't think they'll reach as it is might be a little short but that is gonna allow it to yeah that's much better right no <laughs> what have i done Yeah, that's gonna be that's gonna be much better. So there's the top back on. Now I need to uh, solder on some leads. So I'll have to find some new leads. These are the new leads. And to you, they're gold. I think this is gonna work out pretty good with the uh, original terminals and screws that we had because we've got basically a real easy place to put a couple of uh, new wires. So there's my 
there is my ground or my negative wire I'll strip one of these for a positive I want to use these round terminals here um, I think I can get away with the blue ones no 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 oh, there we go that's the ones I want right there Okay, there's one. This is why I save all the old uh, two-prong power cords I pull off of amplifiers because they they always come in they always come in handy for stuff like this. through there nicely this one come right through here nicely I think we'll be be good to go cool all right that's it's pretty good right what we want to do is put this in series now this negative We'll obviously hook with this negative right here, so uh, we will unplug these because they will go elsewhere for operation mode. Uh, this one will hook to this negative terminal. Can you see that even? I'll check in a second. Okay, so this, our negative lead from the mower will hook to this negative lead. So our positive will hook to the first positive. So it will actually be this guy over here, All right? And we wanna make sure none of these short each other while we're screwing around with them, for sure. We don't want that. We want this positive to go to the next negative on the next battery, and it will come out of this positive and then hook to another one. So we'll have it all in series. So this one will go to this negative. So we just need to, basically all we're doing is finding places to couple these. Um, and we definitely don't, we 
we don't want to couple them somewhere where they can get into trouble. About right here. Should have made this lead right here a bit longer. Okay, so now we've got, can you see that even? Okay, so here's what we have. The positive, this positive is gonna go, gonna go here to the first one, okay? So this one will hook here with this, go through this battery into this one, the positive, through this battery where it hooks here into this one and then back out. So right there should, should get it. Let's take a look. Flip our switch, let's see. Yep, it's pegged. So, what are we missing? Oh, it's on auxiliary, that's why. I don't know if there's anything under this. Let's make sure there's nothing under it. Okay, so the reason I changed this is because this battery pack has uh, got a lot more uh, amp hours than the other battery packs that I was using. Plus, I think it fits a little bit better. It's just gonna be a nicer setup overall. I'll probably get used to hooking it and rehooking it for charging, but uh, let's do some on with it. What has happened here? Not a clue. Something's come loose, maybe? Wow, it melted it. What did it do? What? Oh. Did it? Is that what it did? It melted it? I think it melted it up into the, the connector. So I want to test the batteries, make sure I didn't short a battery or something stupid like that. I don't think I did. So from, check from there, here, oh, 
definitely a bad connection. I think these are going to get too hot. God damn it. Fuck. Get out of there. Oh. Okay, so by this point in the video, it had become obvious to me that connectors were not going to work, and these were the point of failure. And the thing about these is, they're clearly designed for very low wattage, uh, very low heat applications. I say very low, but if you actually go on the website uh, where you can buy these, if you go on, say, banggood.com, it does list some information about this particular style of uh, coupler. They're supposedly rated at 10 amps, according to banggood.com. So 250 volts uh, at 10 amps, if we do the calculation on that, uh, 2,500 watts is what you get, uh, which is way beyond, I think, what anybody would rationally think that something like this would be capable of handling. So that's, uh, that's definitely not feasible. But if you look here, you can see the point of failure. You see that black line up in there? The wire actually had burned its way up into the plastic and was no longer getting a connection because it just had melted up into the plastic. You definitely see it there. Lots of melting there and it actually melted uh, melted this little piece so that it wouldn't move. I couldn't even push it down. Uh, but we went to this one. This one is supposed to be for power but you can see the difference. Uh, so I replaced these with this and uh, the di main difference is that you have this whole uh, internal structure here that's a this little barrel that looks like brass um, that you can tighten these screws down onto to make the connection so that's a much better connection where you don't have anything touching plastic uh, so definitely a better way to go than this connector this connector would be fine for like speakers or you know anything that's uh, really going to be kind of low heat applications where you're not going to have a whole bunch of watts like in a power supply or in a you know a lawnmower
Woo. Okay, so during the making of that video, uh, this thing quit on me. <clears throat> and I'm wondering if it had a thermal, some kind of thermal defeat because uh, this has popped out and I've never seen that happen before. So I wonder if it does have a thermal defeat because I just pressed that back down and it stayed, whereas it would not before. This thing was really hot too, the safety key. I'd have to read up on the manual for this thing, but uh, my guess is with the extra, um, with the extra current output, potential of these batteries um, it's possible that this motor just overworked itself got too hot and uh, through the key so I'm hoping this thing will just start right back up right now but if it doesn't then I, I, I'm gonna start testing the battery connections and we'll see what's going on with that I did not realize I'd forgotten about this that this thing comes equipped with a uh, accessory power supply right here um, and if I had realized that, I probably could have taken the leads off of that and just used those for my battery leads. But uh, if I did this again, I probably would do that because I don't have any accessories for this thing anyway. So, um, but yeah, man, this is uh, this could be interesting. Um, but I, I depressed that, and it looks like it might have reset it after it's cooled down. So let's see if it actually starts, gets any power. And it does. Okay, so this thing has some kind of thermal defeat inside of that little key right there. So if you have one of these mowers that's doing that, that could be why. Um, it's just overheating itself. I'm not sure what exactly I could do about that. Um, except just let it cool off and then restart the thing. But let's see if it starts mowing. Yeah, it does. Okay, so the synopsis of this is I was able to mow this whole front uh, in about 17 minutes without a hitch uh, but when I went over here to mow this front yard here I got a couple of times around and it overheated I was trying to uh, bring it down to three inches because before I had mowed that yard over there at four inches and all the it's pretty thick grass over here there's not a tree like there is here shading everything so just a lot thicker grass but I think it did a pretty good job all things considered I went over it twice actually uh, to try to spread some of the some of the kick out but I think it did a pretty good job overall and I'm happy with how the batteries lasted I think uh, those other batteries before I probably wouldn't have gotten as far nearly as far as I did with my previous set of batteries so I think it's definitely an upgrade so yeah that'll do it for this video if you guys enjoyed it, hit subscribe down below. For now, we'll see y'all later.